Number 10, belly button surgery. If you're not an innie, then you got an outie, said a wise rapper from the trailer park living with his mama. Eminem knows what he's talking about. What is M talking about in his lyrics? Well, belly buttons, of course. I'm just kidding. No one should ever feel ashamed of their bodies. Eminem is just my favorite rapper, and he writes funny stuff. Can you blame me? I say no. But here we are talking about belly button surgery. Some folks are just insecure about that kind of stuff, and they want to change it. Which, to be fair, hey, I say if it's not going to break the bank and it's going to make you feel better, then sure, go ahead, why not? While it may seem strange to some, there is a cosmetic surgery to change your outie belly button into a finger quote more desirable any. The surgery is called umbilicoplasty, I'm sure I'm butchering that name, and it will cost you from around $2,500 to $6,500. Ooh, breaking the bank a little bit. Number 9, Eyeball Tattoo. Remember your first tattoo? You were young, wild, and free. Until about 11 p.m. when you lied and told your parents that you were staying over at your friend's house. The phone was barely on the hook when the tattoo artist named Xavier started revving up his needle like a redneck with a vintage pickup truck and a rusted out muffler. It seemed like a great idea. He sat through all the pain and for sure interesting dialogue Xavier had to offer, only to wonder how much it would cost to get an anchor removed from your biceps. Everyone loves anchors, I don't know why. Well, getting a tattoo might not be a surgery per se, but how about getting one on your eye? Yeah, ooh, no thanks. Like the whites of your eye. I'd say that counts. You get one on your eye for the same reasons you get one on your arm, just some folks run out of room or they're more brave than the rest of us. That's painful. Number eight, face transplant. Life is about survival. Sometimes we just make it out to tell the story. However, a lot of times it leaves us with scars, some that don't heal. For a lot of people, that's high school. The art of face transplant, skin graphing, and reconstruction is amazing to say the least. The attempts to give back what was tragically lost, well, I go more into skin graphing detail, but you two might have a hissy fit. It's actually pretty cool. However, what I want to focus on here was really the first time this was done, which was after the First World War. The veterans who returned home were beaten, battered, and a lot of them some disfigured. That's why Anna Coleman and Derwin Wood spent their time trying to reconstruct the faces of the men in the trenches. Using photographs and medical prostheses, they were pretty successful and given the time, it looked pretty good, all things considered. Crazy that we were able to come up with that so long ago. Number seven, dimples. This one is new for me. I had never thought that this would even be a thing, but at this point, and being an internet host, I don't know why I'm even surprised. It's very simple. Some folks have dimples. Some folks have dimples when they smile. And other folks don't have pronounced dimples. Oh no, what are we going to do? I for one didn't realize it was a sought after look, but apparently so much so that people are willing to go under the knife just for some dimples. Hey, again, no judgment here. If it makes you happy, sure. However, if you really wanted a great smile, all you have to do is subscribe to Bumblebee for more exciting and historical humor. Plus I'll be there and that's all the smile and laughter you need, right? Come on guys. <laughs> Number six, rotation plasty. You might have seen this on TLC or maybe late night scrolling through your phone on TikTok when you should have been in bed. Yes, that's right, I know. This is the surgery where your ankle becomes your knee. Having a shorter backwards leg may seem like Frankenstein science, but it's actually a bit of human ingenuity. It's a surgery that removes the femur, knee, and upper tibia. Take the ankle and attaches it to the rest of the leg, which is rotated 180 degrees. Hence, maybe we can show you a picture. I'm not sure, an might pull one up. Why would you need to do this not for fun it's not for fun well mainly because of bone tumors and cancers however with doing this the person can have their prosthesis that functions much better than having the whole or most of the leg amputated so yes it looks strange but it's actually very cool helpful and yeah, it's just sick, dude. I don't know, it's just cool. Number five, tobacco enema. Perhaps this is where the expression don't blow smoke up my ass came from. I certainly hope it did, otherwise I'm kinda reaching here. When I saw this, I just had to add it to the list. As far as surgeries go, it's less cutting and uh, more on the invasive side, if you will. The tobacco smoke enema. Smoking was a huge part of Western European culture. Heck, it's been a part of a lot of cultures right up to the late 80s. We realized it was kind of bad. It's when we started caring. Well, in Victorian times, there was such a thing as a tobacco enema. One such event, when a woman was pulled from the water suspected to have drowned, her husband was instructed with a pipe to perform such an operation. The thought was it would warm the patient from the inside and thus start respiration. In case of the woman of the river in 1746, it actually worked, or so the story goes. I, I don't know if I want that in my, in my bum. 
I don't know. I'm gonna say no to that. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no. Thank you. No, no smoke in my bum, please. Number four. Ook. I hope your medicine stat is above 75 because this one is straight out of Fallout or science fiction. Sports fans, here we go. The osteodonto keratoprothesis is a vision repair surgery that requires the use of your eye, a cheek, and your tooth. I'm not making that up. A lamina of tissue is cut from the tooth and it is drilled in the hole and is fitted with optics. That is, that's, that just doesn't sound real. That sounds crazy. The lamina is grown in the patient's cheek for a period of months and then is implanted upon the eye. Yes, it is quite strange and yes, it's very expensive. This will relate to a point later on, trust me, but man, that's just, that's so weird. Watch out, dude. I'm growing some crazy important tissues in my cheek, bro, so I can see again, dude. Watch out. My cheeks are full of teeth, bro. Number three, piggyback heart surgery. No, this is not heart surgery performed in the piggyback position. Well, it does sound kind of interesting and maybe kind of fun for some. I don't know. What this actually refers to is a variant of heart transplant surgery. As I'm sure you've heard, a successful transplant is when the new organ goes in, works, and is accepted by the new body. And the check doesn't bounce. <laughs> I gotta make sure the check doesn't bounce. However, it is way more complicated than I'm making it. I'm simply simplifying. So one way to help the body ease its way with new parts is to have both hearts in at the same time and slowly wane off the old one. Hence, piggybacking. That is so cool cool i i can't even you know folks always said i had a lot of heart but now now they know i've got two number two head transplant this is exactly how it sounds i'm relating back to point four see i told you i'd get there it's very science fiction but we may be closer than you think to actually completing this head transplants would fix a lot of things mainly life-altering paralysis or those who suffer from physical debilitations in 2013 italian doctors posed that it could be done and after playing with enough mice to make the pied piper uncomfortable it was done on cadavers where there was some good results what i'm getting at is 20 years ago we could barely send megabytes of data so imagine what could happen 20 years from now that head transplant that could be a reality that could be real for us then the guys from jack that's not the ribbon anything they just get new bodies and keep making movies number one my least personal favorite teeth sharpening okay i know i've mentioned this a few times in other videos but you gotta understand how uncomfortable this makes me. Usually done in African, Asian, and Polynesian cultures, it's where the lovely ladies of a village get their teeth whittled down to resemble that of a James Bond villain. Again, I'm not here to judge. I can't judge. Who am I to judge? However, I just don't have a great track record with a dentist. Remember how I said I was a good boy? Okay, well, but the dentist I wasn't. I had a few cavities and I had to have my wisdom teeth pulled and, well, I was there a few times. It was uncomfortable. I just can't imagine someone filing my teeth down. I was out of commission for at least two weeks after the wisdom teeth, so you have to understand how having a dude shave your teeth to make them sharp uh, makes me makes me squirm. No thank you. Number 10, theater. Look, I really like this one. It's a medical procedure and theater at the same time. Taking a look at Mesoamerican culture and more specifically the Aztecs, well, they love to sacrifice people in front of roaring crowds nonetheless. And basically, it was a very crude operations. Doctors today have to go through a lot and I am thankful for them. Really, I, I am. But I'm sure even the worst second-rate doctor today knows that taking someone's heart out, Mortal Kombat style, uh, is a little bit of a Hippocratic no-no. No anesthetic, no hand washing, and this time the crowd really doesn't want you to wake up. Man, that's rough. Let me just cut you open, grab it out. <laughs> Kali Ma style, not good, nah, don't want it. Nope, no thanks. Number nine, hemispherectomy. Hold on to your bark bucket, folks, cause, uh, well, I don't do well with this sort of thing. This surgery entails removing or disabling half of the human brain. Usually done for those suffering with seizures, which really suck, the success rate is around the two thirds margin, and I'm about a 50 on the VOM scale. Ooh, don't like it, makes me queasy. 20% of the people see at least a large reduction in those seizures. Those that don't, if properly, considered can go for a repeat surgery but the last time I checked two halves put them together that, that makes a hole which is a whole brain so I, I don't exactly know how that works but okay I guess the doctors know better while there are some physical side effects like that half of your body not working as well as it did before or maybe that was the reason why you went in the first place uh, however the brain does seem to make new neural connections thus making up for a lot of the mental capacity the other half of your brain did before it was removed that's cool stuff man damn Number eight, here's another one I can't pronounce. Uh, hemocore protoctomy, hemo, hemo, hemicore porectomy, hemipore correctomy. Number eight, hemicore porectomy. 
also known as a translumbar amputation. Or in nerd talk, remember that one time in that one Star Wars movie where Obi-Wan Kenobi cut Darth Maul in half after he was enraged by Qui-Gon's passing? Okay, that, but for real, and not charming actor Ewan McGregor performing your surgery. Although, he's a handsome guy, he could probably do anything he wants. Can't wait to see Obi-Wan, I'm really excited. However, it is a severely drastic procedure, recommended only as a last resort for patients with severe or potentially fatal illnesses such as osteomyelitis, tumors, and severe traumas. It also means you lose access to both your gabagool uh, and your main exit, if you catch my drift. I honestly don't know how doctors do it. It's just, that's, oh man, that's a, that's a rough one, man, that's tough. Number seven, lobotomy. Hello there, lobotomite. What brings you to the big empty? Follow New Vegas reference, anyone? Uh, ah, gotta love a little fun in this list. I'm talking about some weird stuff, gotta, gotta have some fun. Well, yes, lobotomies. Maybe you've heard of them, maybe not, most likely. But basically, it's a surgical procedure that severs most connections of the prefrontal cortex. If that sounds like a really bad idea, that's because it is. It was meant to help mentally ill patients, the truly disturbed, or sometimes even people who didn't really need one and rather just needed better medical attention, but we just didn't know any better back then. There was some success with this awful surgery, but more often than not, it led to worse side effects. And well, if you've ever seen Shutter Island, then you know what I'm talking about. Is it better to live as a monster or die as a good man? <laughs> Number six, the Lindbergh operation. Okay, imagine going in for a surgery that's going to make you live better, but you have to wait a while and you worry about that day for months. You think about loved ones, what your life has been and what it will be afterwards. Finally, the day approaches and now your bum is hanging out a hospital gown. The doctors try to relax you as the surgery is about to commence. That's when they roll in this machine with arms and they tell you that the surgery is going to be completed by a robot controlled by some doctors in New York. You're miles away from that. Uh, well, that sounds scary, but it's true. This, this actually happened in what may be the first transatlantic surgery. It's actually pretty cool and could possibly lead to some more life-saving surgeries in the future. That's a pretty cool thing. They had a robot that cut a lady open, took her gallbladder out. It's a crazy thing. Look that one up. It's actually really cool. Number five, trepanation. Neil Armstrong, Henry Ford, and the first time I ate McDonald's. All of these events and people are responsible for great first moments in history. First man on the moon, first assembly line, and the first time I knew I was in love. Love me some of that clown beef. Mmm. Delicious. Anyway, what I'm talking about is what is thought to be the first medical surgical procedure, trepanation, which dates back all the way back to our caveman days, ooga booga. Basically, when there was something wrong with you, the solution was to drill into your scalp until you saw gray matter and that should release all your pain and pressure and suffering and whatever ails you, sir. I, okay. Skulls have been found dating back to 6500 BC, as well as paintings that seem to describe the process. Boy. I need that like a hole in the head. That's a hole in the head? Yeah, yeah. Nice one. Not bad. Anyway, number four, palm lines. Okay, getting into the really weird stuff here. Everyone at home, I want you to look at your palms. You see those lines? Yeah, those lines in your hand. Yeah, they have a reason to be there. Or so the astrologer who charges $75 an hour from me down the street told me so. Money line, love line. Look, I I'm not gonna pretend I know how it works. I'm just a guy trying to be Canada's next biggest comedy star. <laughs> Hi. However, some folks really go for the whole astrology and healing crystal business. As a result, there's a cosmetic surgery to have the lines on your hand redrawn, if that makes any sense. Wow, okay. I guess to change your fate? Listen, I'm, I'm no Confucius, but your fate is decided by you, not an intrusive cosmetic surgery that's gonna make your money line smaller, right? Number three, Hylian ear job. Hey, look, no judgment here. I am a person just like everyone else. I got likes, dislikes, loves, hates. I am a big fan of the Legend of Zelda series. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't expecting that one, baby! Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, how's that for Breath of the Wild, Icarus? Who's at the center of these games? Link and Zelda, two elfish-like humans who possess the power of the Triforce. Or highly and technically nerds, I know, I'm sorry. Well, apparently the elf ear look is so desirable that the urge to hi -ya! across your favorite patch of open grass is so strong that some folks are willing to have their ears cropped in order to look like Link permanently. 
I'm just using Ling as an example because there's tons of creatures from other lore that had the same sort of features in the pointy years. But regardless, removing and reshaping cartilage to achieve that elvish style is, is a strange one. Number two, tongue splitting. All right, you know what this one is, but it, it's just crazy to me. Tongue bifurcation is done by splitting the tongue. However, I just learned that it's not permanent, so just in case you grow out of your rebellious youth in your late 20s, then not all is lost, my friends. Kinda nice. Some want a certain look. Others do it because, uh, well, it's for the super fun naughty bedroom time. Usually done with a hot scalpel to prevent bleeding, and then the cut sides are sewn and stitched. I don't think there's enough money on earth to have that done to me. I, I can't, I get a little, whew, get a little, you know, it's just not good for, oh. Number one, conjoined twin separation. This one always fascinated me, still does. It's such an unusual experience and actually pretty rare, but it happens nonetheless. Conjoined twins develop when an early embryo only partially separates to form two individuals. Although two fetuses will develop from this embryo, they will remain physically connected, most often at the chest, abdomen, or the pelvis. It makes everyday life challenging, and those who don't live like this, very curious on how everyday things work. However, in a modern time, there's been great efforts to separate these twins. Every situation is different, and some simply just don't qualify because there are too many vital organs that are shared. However, I think it's amazing. It's a feat of medical science and technology to give people the life that they deserve. To any doctor that's ever pulled this off, thank you. You're amazing. 70% of them are female. I learned that too right before I came in. 70% of conjoined twins are female, and, and the less are male, which is a weird stat. That's kind of interesting. I don't know.